Hello, everyone. This is lecture two. Uh, we're going to do approximating change with difference equations. So the learning objectives of this lecture is to distinguish between discrete changes and continuous change. Um, and we're going to approximate a continuous change by difference equations. Uh, in addition to that, in this lecture, you will see that you can utilize Excel spreadsheet um, to help you with some calculations, and we're going to use uh, Python uh, again to, um, to produce some graphs to help us understand the behavior of the change better. All right, so the first topic I want to cover is the discrete versus continuous change. So when constructing model involving change, um, we see that some change take place uh, in the discrete time interval. So some changes take place in discrete time interval. And when this happened, we use difference equations, right? So I'm going to use difference equations. Now, there are some changes that occur continuously. So, so some change occur continuously. And when that is the case, you can use something called differential equations. Again, we're going to look at this particular type of change later on in the course. So we're going to have differential equations to model continuous change. And um, because the difference, there is the difference between the discrete time interval and continuous change, um, we can see the distinctions right there, right, between difference equations and differential equations. However, different equations can help you to actually approximate the a continuous change, right? That is one way to simplify the model that you have. Okay, so that is the particular test that we have for this lecture that we're going to approximate. A continuous change um, and this is one way to simplify the model of this the model simplifications okay so uh, hopefully it's give you some idea how to distinguish between uh, discrete time interval for uh, some changes and continuous time interval for some changes and the difference when you need to use difference equation or differential equations. But at the same time, difference equations can be used to approximate uh, a continuous change. That is one way to simplify the model. Okay, next I'm gonna give you uh, one example that's related to discrete um, time interval, uh, even though this is a continuous change. All right, so for example one, this is related to cell growth. Uh, so to consider the growth of the E. coli cell culture measure every 30 minutes for three hours. The culture was growth in a nut nutrient solution at 70, uh, 37 degree Celsius. So we don't need to care about this information. It's just part of the problem. Um, so this is the observations um, uh, results that we uh, that happened in the lab. So for this is the initial time at zero, the cell density of E. coli cell culture is 0 .0, uh, 0 0.055. Uh, after 30 uh, minutes, they take another measurement of the density. After another 30 minutes, they take another um, measurement of the density and so on and so forth. Right. Um, so what we're going to do for this particular problem is to do a few things here. First, we're going to find the difference between um, the change for every 
half an hour. So what is the change between this two time period? What is the change between half an hour and one hour? What is the change between one hour and uh, one hour and 30 minutes? So on and so forth. The second task is to find the ratio between the max measurement and the previous measurement. So why did we do, why do we do that? Because we want to find the relationship um, between the previous term and the next term, so that we can see the re uh, relationship of x uh, sub n plus one minus x sub n um, that has something related to the function of f of x sub n. Right. So this is the difference equations we're looking for. And hopefully, hopefully we have uh, so different equation. And eventually we will want to see a linear relationship between the difference equations and that the functions f of x of n. Okay. So here's the calculations. Right? So this is already given to you. Right? So if n equal to zero, that is the first, um, the initial value. Now, when n equal to one, that is the first half an hour. Right. And when you have n equal to two, that is the second half an hour, which is one hour, so on and so forth. Right. So you're going to let n be the uh, number of minutes of every 30 minutes of measurement. Right. And x sub n is going to be the uh, the density, the cell density of measure every 30 minutes. Okay, so this table is given to us already, right? So you can calculate the difference between the previous uh, the next measurement and the previous measurement of cell density. If you do the difference, uh, if you take 0 0.12 uh, two minus 0 0.055, this is what you get, and so on and so forth. Right, and you can also on this column calculate the ratio of the next term over the previous term. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go to the Excel spreadsheet to actually input this information in so that you can see how would you come up with hopefully the linear relationship between the difference equations and the function f of x sub n. Okay, now hopefully on the screen, you can see two different windows. One is our lecture note, and on the right-hand side is the uh, Excel spreadsheet that we're going to use to estimate or calculate the, uh, the difference between two values and the ratio of two values. Okay, so in this case, let me type in, this is example one, and I'm going to save this Excel spreadsheet on my desktop and I call this lecture two. All right, so in the first column, uh, let me input the um, uh, original observations here. So, so I have the first column is N, zero, one, uh, two, three, so on and so forth. Or what I can do is I'm going to track all of this rows and I click on that and drag it down so that I don't have to keep typing. Okay, so we just actually need uh, five rows. All right, in the next column, I'm going to have the cell density and I'm going to put in the uh, given value by the example, so 0 0.055, 0 0.12, uh, 0 0.231, 0 0.36, 0 0.516, 0 0.821, and 1.3. Right, so we have six, sorry, six row. All right. So now to calculate the difference, uh, 
of cell density. Now what you do is you select this column, hit equal. That the difference that you want to make is the next observations minus the previous observations. And you get the result, which is 0 0.065, which, which match with our um, value given in this table. Okay. Now you don't want to keep typing in all the information. So you just basically click the row and select this row and drag it down. So all the formula will get dragged down as well. And I just want to do this up to five rows because there's no seven row here to do the differences. Okay, so if you, um, if you check the calculations here, it's matched with the values given in this table. So we're good. Now, next we want to calculate the ratio of values. Right. Now the ratio of value is calculated at so equal the next value divided by the, the previous value. So you got 2.1a, 1a, so on and so forth. Um, so I just want to have, let's say, two decimal places, so similar to the one that uh, given in the table in the lecture note. So I select all the column I'm going to calculate. Right. And then I'm going to change the format, right click, and then format cells. And I click on number and I change to two decimal places. And now everything is in two decimal places. So 2.18. Okay, um, so though I don't want to keep typing down the uh, formula, so I'm just going to click this row and drag it down to row five so I can have the value of the ratio of the next value over the previous value. Okay, now the next thing to do is you want to see the relationship between the difference and the original observations. So I want to see the relationship between this column, cell density, and the difference of the cell density so that I can come up with a formula for my difference equations. All right, so to see that relationship, what I can do is I'm going to choose these two columns. I'm going to go to insert, and I'm going to choose scatter plot and hit this scatter plot and I have this graph. Okay, so for this graph, it looks like the relationship that can be approximated using a linear line or the straight line, okay? And to have that particular straight line, what you can do is you can click on any point on the graph, any blue point on the graph, and then right click on that, you add trend line, and then you can choose some options here. In this case, I'm going to choose linear. And I want to see the relationship between uh, the, two, um, uh, the two values, right? The cell density on the x-axis and the difference of the cell density on the y-axis. Um, I want to see the relationship through an equation, right? So this is the equations I want to see. All right, so the slope of this line is 0.538. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my equations um, here. So I have x n sub n plus one minus x sub n equal to, so the change uh, is going to be 0.538 x sub n. So that's a linear relationship. Okay, now I'm going to solve for x sub n plus one and this is going to be equal to 1.538 x sub n. So this formula tells us that the difference of the cell density uh, between the first 30 minutes 
will increase by this amount, right? So the increase is 0.538 times the original uh, or the initial value. And then the difference between the next half an hour is going to be 0.538 times uh, the, this uh, cell density at 30 minutes, okay? And so on and so forth. Okay, so we have one relationship right here, x sub n plus one equal to 1.538 times x sub n. And also you may wonder what's going to happen with point, um, 0 0.0189. So that will be for the next lecture. But for now, we just going to pick the 0.538x um, to, to come up, um, to set that equal to the difference equations. And we come up with one formula right here, uh, a one model and I call this model one. Okay, uh, so model one, let me fix this. Now, um, I can actually generate another model using the ratio of value to, because as you can see from this particular calculations, right? So X sub N plus one over X sub N to give you some constant, some value. So X sub N plus one over X sub N is equal to some constant C. And if we solve for X sub N, X sub N plus one equal to C times X sub N, you have a second model and I'm going to call this model two. And this particular value of constants, right, can be actually calculate using the average of all the ratio value that you have in this column. So you can choose to calculate the average. So in Excel spreadsheet, you're gonna hit equal, type in the word average and click on that. And then you choose the value from this column, right? And then hit enter it will give you the average value or the mean value of this five ratio of values, okay? So in this case, C is, is equal to 1.71. So X sub N plus one is equal to 1.71 X sub N. So you now have two models that you can play around with. Uh, depends on the models, um, you may see a different behavior of, um, um, of, um, of the measurement, right? Okay, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot all of this model in Python to make the comparison between the observations that I have, all right, how it grows over time for um, the, uh, when I see that in the observations and how the cell density grows using model one and how it grows using model two. Okay. So again, if you open Anaconda, this is the window that you're going to see, and I'm going to click on Jupyter Notebook. Um, so you're going to see this uh, browser, right? So I'm using Grom right now. And I'm storing all my code in on desktop. So I click on desktop under code. And I have again, multiple languages that I have been using. So the first one is MATLAB, the second one is Python. So I click on Python and I'm going to create a, a new uh, Python uh, file. So I'm gonna click and change this to lecture two. So again, what I want to see is I want to see the, um, the difference between the model, between the observations for uh, numbers, the model one and model two. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, well, eventually I'm gonna plot. So I'm gonna, uh, import the plotting command. So mat plot library. So lib mat plot lib dot pi plot import 
star, right? So from here, I mean, I import all the uh, libraries or extensions of uh, plotting tool in Python. Okay. And similar to the last lecture, lecture one, I'm going to import NumPy. Uh, from NumPy, import star. So I import all numerical Python extensions, all numerical extensions. Okay, so it's just going to input some original data, original dash data. And I'm going to just copy and paste what I already have in here. So actually, let me do it out. So I want to create an array. An array is kind of a matrix or the vector in Python. And open parentheses, close brackets. Open parentheses, close parentheses, open brackets, close brackets, and I input all the um, initial values. So I have 0 0.055, 0.120. 0 0.231, 0 0.360, 0 0.516, 0 0.821, and 1.300. Okay, so that is my original uh, data, uh, all the all the observation of the cell density. Okay. Also, at the same time, I want to compare this against the two models that I derived earlier. So the first model has the rate of 1.538, and the second model has the rate of 1.71. Okay, so the initial value, that's this at the starting point, the initial value for all of this uh, data is going to be 0 0.055. So XO is going to be 0 0.055. Um, so the next thing I want to do is I want to eventually store all the calculations. So what I do is going to store. Um, so I create something called XVAL. Eventually, everything will be clear to you. But for now, let me just type the command that I need. So I want to create some empty store values. OK, so x is going to be the x value that gets changed over time. So that's going to be n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. The store is the cell density. Right, so let me command here mt storage of cell density for model one. Right. Eventually, when we run this through a loop, um, all the value gets stored into the store dash one uh, file. Okay. And for the store dash two, this is the empty storage of cell density for model two. Okay. Uh, so, um, so to distinguish between uh, store one and store two, so I'm gonna hit X old one to be equal to X old and X old two to be equal to X old as well. Now we go through the for loop. All right, so for i in range from zero to n, for n is equal to seven. Right, so go, let me go over here and type in that n is equal to seven. All right, so now I need to store all the values that I calculate into the empty store that I have. So the X value uh, storage, that's going to give me the update of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm going to store all of that up to 7. 
So to store the value, what I do is x val. The command is dot append. And then I'm going to stall i, right? So i went in from 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 7. So that's the store that I have. Now store 1, the cell density for the first model, right? So append uh, x01, right? And store 2, append x02. Okay. But I still need to, to update um, the, uh, the value of the cell density for model one and model two. So x new one is equal to one point, sorry, r1 time x01 and x new two is equal to r2 time x02. Uh, and now I have the new density for the first model and the new cell density for the second model. I use this new values to calculate for the next value, right? To do that, I'm going to update x01 equal to x new one and x02 equal to x new two. My, and that's it for me that the loop will run through everything, calculate the uh, new cell density using two different models. So model one, and this is model two, right? And give me the value, right? Because it's going to store in store one and store two. Now to actually see the um, to compare the model using graphs, right? So we're gonna plot the original data, uh, the data from model one and the data from model two. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna plot X value. So this is going to be zero, one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. Um, and I'm going to plot the original data, my original underscore data, okay? And I'm going to plot this using circle with dash line. And I'm going to use the color yellow. Okay, so plot the original data. Now I'm gonna plot the data from model one. So X value, so the X value is going to be the same. I'm gonna store one, right? Because all the data from model one gets stored in store underscore one. And I'm going to plot this using circle as well, but just a straight line, connect all the points together. The color is, um, I'm going to call this black. So black is K. So plot data from model one. And I'm going to do the same thing for model two because all the data in model two gets stored in store underscore two. I'm going to do a circle um, the as, as well. The color is going to be blue. So I'm just going to type the word blue. All right, so this is data, plot data from model two. Okay, and I'm going to show all of this on the same graph and I'm going to hit shift enter. And it will give you the, uh, the graph of all of this data that I just obtained. So the blue one is the second model. The first one, the black one is the first model and the yellow one is the original data. Okay. Now you can make this uh, plot a little bit easier to read. What you can do is you can um, uh, make the font a little bit better, right? Or bigger for that matter. So I choose RC, my entire and the word font. And the default size I'm gonna use is 15, right? Make the font bigger, 
right? So um, I think the default size for the plot in Python is, is 10. So I'm gonna make that better and bigger to read. So this is bigger to read. Uh, also, if you just have the plot, it's the very plain the plot, right? So you don't know what is the X value is going to be, what is the Y value is going to be. Um, you can change the um, um, you can change the value, uh, the title as well, right? Or the label of the the X uh, coordinate and the Y coordinate. So what I'm going to do is I change X label, label to uh, number of happening of um, thirty minutes. The Y value or the Y label, sorry, is the cell density. Okay. And to distinguish between two different, uh, three different plots here, um, you can use something called legend to uh, use, some, use some annotations for uh, different curves. So the first curve that you have is the original data. So the type original. Right? Um, you can just type original data or whatever you feel like. So you can, when you read the graph, you can recognize that is the, the curve for the original data. Um, the second plot that we did is the plot data for model one. So model one and the last graph that we did is model two. You hit shift enter again. So we make some mistake here. Uh, Um, I forgot that I need to put in a bracket. So this should be good. Okay, so we need to bracket, uh, open bracket, close bracket here. And would give you some explanations that for yellow dot dash um, is the regional data. Uh, straight line with dot in black is model one and dash line with a blue circle is going to be model two, so on and so forth. Okay, so that how you make the comparisons. And in this case, you can see that the graphs or the data from the second model fit better with the original data or the observations data. Okay, and model two uh, in model one is not as good, but if you consider take into account this particular number 0 0.0189, into your model, you will make the model a little bit better, right? So let, and again, I mentioned that, that is for the next lecture, but for now, let just give us, let's do some experiments, right? So 0 0.0189, so we're going to add in model one, 0 0.0189, see what happened. Let's run the code again. And you can see that um, it's fit with the yellow, um, curve better. Okay. Um, so let me remove this out of our model one. Right. So we take, we do all of this to see that no matter what type of model that we have, model one or model two, um, is present a similar behavior of the curve, which is looks like an exponential curve. Right. And because of that, we call this approximations or um, estimation is the discrete exponential growth. Okay, so that's for the first example. Okay, let me go back to uh, my uh, lecture notes. Okay, so I come up with this calculations. I have two models, so the color is a little bit different from our calculations. So this is the original, right? Um, this uh, blue is uh, where you have R equal to 1.71 or model two. And this is R equal to 1.538. Uh, and this is from model one, okay. 
And again, I want to mention that this relationship gives you the discrete exponential growth. Okay, so this gives you discrete exponential growth. Okay, so now let's see another example on discrete exponential growth. So this is a continuous growth, but we use difference equation to approximate the growth, right? Because this, from the, the first example, uh, the growth is happening continuously, right? There's no stopping of the self density growth, uh, but we're just going to use discrete uh, equations to estimate or approximate the growth. Now for the second example, we have, uh, in this case, the growth of a yeast culture, right? So the data is represented in this table, right? So the time in hours, so n is equal to zero, so zero hours, which is the initial value, and equal to one, which is one hour, and equal to two, which is two hours, so on, so on and so forth. They also give us the observed biomass of the yeast culture over time and the change of the biomass over time, right? The difference between the next value and the previous value. And they also give us the plot between the biomass and the change in biomass and look like there is a linear relationship between the biomass and the, um, and the change in the biomass. And later, we're going to use the Excel spreadsheet to uh, calculate uh, the value of the line, right? Or the formula of the line, okay? But for now, let me do some uh, assumptions here. So you let N be the number of hour. Right? And P sub N is the biomass of the yeast culture uh, after n hours. Okay, so we want to come up with the difference equations. Again, the change is delta P sub n equal to P sub n plus one minus P sub n going to be equal to some functions related to P sub n, right? Um, so we plot P sub n in the, so this is P sub n, and this is P sub n plus one minus P sub n in the y axis, P sub n in the x axis, and there is a linear relationship between P sub n and P sub n plus one minus P sub n. So therefore you have P sub n plus one minus P sub n equal to some value called constant K times P sub n, right? Because there is a linear relationship that we see on the graph. Okay. So we say that change in biomass is proportional. to the current sign of the populations. Okay, so in this case, K is a positive constant and we can as actually estimate the value of K, so positive constant, right? So we do this in two different ways. Uh, just like the previous example, the first one is to compare the cell death, I'm um, sorry, the biomass and the difference of the biomass come up with the linear